And I'm also giving thanks to the Dzolkin itself and the Hunabku, the one and only giver of movement and measure, the great central sun and black hole at the epicenter of the omniverse, the maker and modeler of all things physical and non-physical, heart of earth, heart of sky, heart of humanity, Hunabku. I am here to do your work and I Thank you for your continued energetic support. Greetings, dear souls. I am Crispy, a Gaian, Mayan, Pleiadian, emissary of light. I am another you. You are another me. We are one. One godsciousness. In the Kesh Alakin. Namaste. Today, this is my 10th video in the Soulmate Slash Twin Flames series. And the first thing I would like to say to you is that in the current vernacular of Twin Flames, meaning one soul that split itself in half, perhaps at the very beginning of the universe, and then finally came back together, only to fight and argue and complain and kiss and make up and argue and run and chase and maybe get back together, but then maybe split up and never find another is complete bullshit. It does not exist except in the mind of some very confused and some very controlling individuals. Just today, my dear soul sisters and bro stars, I purchased a book by Edgar Cayce, who many of the mm, to wit flames people state as being evidence for their information. The book is called Soulmates and Soul Companions, and in this book, Written by Kevin Tadeshi, it clearly states the phrase from Edgar Cayce, while in a trance and completely connected to what we can now call the Akash, the Akashic Records, while he was in one of his perhaps 15,000 trances, he said the following or should I say godsciousness, said through him that there are identical souls? No. No two leaves on a tree, no two blades of grass are identical. There is no such thing as twin flames, meaning a soul that was split in half, and then came back together. Complete false information. Impossible. In my other videos, I have said that because of the phrase, as above, so below, as within, so without, as in me, so in you, combining that with in la kesh alakin, I am another you, we are one. What this as above, so below means is that as above is the spiritual world, as below is the physical world. They are reflections of each other. They are one. They are in fact the same. We do live in a universe of duality. That's what the yin-yang and the hunabku represents. But it's complete harmony. There is exactly the same amount of light as dark. Both are 100% completely necessary. Now, is there on earth any two identical people? Has there ever been on earth any two identical fingerprints? Has that ever happened? Has there ever been two identical snowflakes? or two identical anythings. No, it is not possible. Everything in existence 
is completely, just like everything else, unique. <laughs> oh my goodness. universe, shall we call it, is that it's trying to tell you, you don't know what's going on in your life. You need to find out from them, this other person, are they my twin flame? Even uh, Edgar Casey was asked this a lot. Now, he did readings for people. I want to uh, remind you of the time frame here. 1901 to 1945. He was being asked at that time, is this person, is my husband my twin flame? That vernacular was in place perhaps 120 years ago. I am not sure exactly when that phrase was asked of him, but it was. So that phrase was around. It's been around for a long time. And people were very confused back then. That's why he answered, that there are identical souls? No! But somehow, 120 years later, it has spun off into this extremely lucrative business because it works on doubt, which means fear. People are afraid. People are fearful of being lonely and they're confused and they have doubt. Is this person the right one for me? Here, let me give you lots of money so you can tell me. Casey goes on to say that because every single soul is connected to Godsciousness. Every single soul, every human, every soul is connected to Godsciousness. We are all soulmates of each other. Okay? So, in la kesh ala in, put that in your pipe and smoke it. We are one. If you add up all the humans on earth, the number is one. That's all the souls that have ever been and will ever be. If you add them all up, it equals one. So get off your high ego horse and get back down to reality on level ground with everyone else. There is only one of us here. We are all holy holograms of Godsciousness. We are all divine fractals of Godsciousness. We are all sacred sparks of Godsciousness. Every single human being is one face, 
one facet in the diamond of soul consciousness. Now, back to Mayan embodiment astrology, I can show you how you interconnect with any other person or all other people, as long as you know their birthdays on the Mayan calendar, which is super easy. This is the website that I recommend. Now, just put in the birthdays. The first thing you see is your glyph, which is ah, color. Now, what you'll notice is there are four colors. So at the very most basic, all humanity can be divided into the four colors, which means four directions, four elements, four seasons, four times of the day, and the four bodies, if you will. So red glyphs, the very first glyph, here it is, the sunrise. And it's red, the physical. It's the very first thing we ever know is our physical body. And that means the direction of east, springtime. And the time of day is the sunrise, as you might imagine. Have you ever watched the sunrise? It's red, my friends. The physical body. The very next thing we experience is spirit. The white glyphs. Red, white, blue, yellow, red, white, blue, yellow. Red, white, blue, yellow. That's why I wear these. <laughs> I'm a very simple man. I'm a very basic man. I need things broken down to their most elemental, simple forms. White is the spiritual body. It is north. It is winter. It is wind, air, spirit, inspiration. Okay, are you with me? Red, white, blue, the blue glyphs today. I'm a blue glyph. Today, actually, is the Mayan birthday of not only Janet Jackson, but also Billie Eilish. Now, it happens to be tone 13, two bars. All right, let's do it like this. Two bars, three dots, which is the final tone of 13. It just keeps going around and around and around. 13 means the seven chakras. It means transcending. Today is called transcending rainstorm. Now, the rainstorm is the number one glyph out of all 20 glyphs connected to the divine feminine, and tone 13 is transcending. Uh, it is ascension. We could say today is divine feminine ascension. Thank you, goddesses. So beautiful. Blue, direction of west, element of water, season of autumn, sunset as the high-powered time of the day, and Even though I'm an eagle. Eagles are very emotional people. Animals. They have 
such intense love. So do rainstorms and the dusk, all of the dusky ones. And the deer and the monkey, our primary processing modality is our emotional body. I have come to embrace that and taken it on as my superpower. And then we have the fire, the yellow people, the yellow glyphs. Khan, Lamat, Eb, Eve and Ahau. They are noon. They are the south. They are the summer. They are the thinking body, the fiery mind. So, those four colors, elements, relate to each other in a similar way that the zodiac it is at its most basic broken into four too, the exact same four that I just mentioned. Isn't that fascinating that the zodiac and the Mayan calendar line up precisely? However, this one changes every single day, new glyph, new tone every day, instead of 30 days of one. And sure, yeah, I know, rising and everything, and where's Uranus? <laughs> you know, the funny thing is, Everyone has Uranus in the exact same place, no matter what day of the year you're born. <laughs> Sorry. <clears throat> but it's true. Now, um, at our most basic, we all relate to each other in these four directions, four elemental fashions. First of all, if you are red and another red person, you relate to them, all the same colors. The same colors relate to each other with a mirroring and friendly relationship, as I call it. Again, these are my terms in my embodiment coming from over 25 years of research, every single English book I could find, every website, and I feel 100% confident in the veracity and accuracy of what I am telling you. Now, all of the red and all of the blue relate to each other, and all of the white and all of the yellow relate to each other with a balancing and supporting relationship, and that is because, my friend, every single blue glyph has red for their Divine Feminine and Divine Masculine. Did I mention that every single human being has Divine Feminine and Divine Masculine powers? Everyone. Because so does Godsciousness. The Hunabku, the Yin Yang, Godsciousness is equally and exactly Divine Feminine and Divine Masculine. Look around you. Look at every thing on earth, every living thing. It has divine masculine and divine feminine qualities. So does every single human. <laughs> Especially the living ones. Now, balancing and supporting relationships. So everyone of the same color, mirroring and friendly. Now, I would like to say this. Mirroring does not necessarily mean harmonious for some people. Often, what you see in the mirror is what you most dislike. In yourself, you project it onto other people. Okay? I'm not making this up. Look in a thousand books on psychology, pop or otherwise. <laughs> Um, balance and support, I don't see that as any real conflict. I mean, sure, anyone can have conflict with anyone. And as 
Edgar Cayce says very clearly in this book, choice is beyond all. Doesn't matter if you have a soulmate relationship and you've had 50 lifetimes together. Anything that happens right now is what you are choosing and it's more powerful. And by the way, the Maya also feel that. This, even though it is DNA, and even though this perfectly maps into the precession of the equinoxes, your birthday on here is just a matrix. It's a framework. It's a skeleton, as it were. Everything you do is your choice because above and beyond everything else is free will. That's the way we were made. So you've got divine feminine, divine masculine of every physical thing that exists, and that is sitting inside the black womb of no thing, which is free will. Crazy. I love it. It's so good. All right. So that is the same colors, same directions, and the red and white. Now you'll notice, uh, sorry, the red and blue. You'll notice that red is east, sun rises in the east, and blue is west, where the sun sets, and the other two are north and south. So they are across from each other. You'll also notice on the wheel. All right, so here's the 20th glyph. Look directly across. The 10th, it is white, okay? Yellow and white, directly across from each other. Red and blue, directly across from each other. Of course. So you might be wondering, and uh, this is similar to the Western astrology, zodiac, I should call it, zodiac astrology. Um, you see all those things on Facebook and everywhere else, oh, best sexual partners and all of that, and, and that's fine and everything, sex is great. Did you know that it all boils down to elements? Okay. Sometimes you get fire... So we'll call that all of the yellow glyphs and water, all the blue, and you put it together and it can be very steamy. <laughs> now, as you can see by this amazing chart that I made, when you put supposedly conflicting elements like fire and water, if you pour too much water, you get, pfft, it's gone, it's nothing, it's crap, right? Or if you have too much fire, let's say you've got a, a pot with water in it and it's not that much water and a lot of heat, you're going to boil away all the water pretty quick and then you got a problem. So too much of either is no good. But the right amount of fire and the right amount of water is so steamy. Actually, I call that relationship mysterious slash confusing. Because if your primary processing modality, like myself, is emotion, and you meet someone whose primary modality is the fiery mind, you could be like, wow, and also like, what? Am I right? Now, that also goes for the physically-oriented people and the spiritual. So all of the red glyphs to all of the white glyphs have that same relationship. You know, a, a very spiritually-minded person might see this physical goddess and go, wow, so mysterious and also like, why does she work out seven days a week? I don't get it. All right. So mysterious can be a very good thing. 
It can fuel the relationship, absolutely. There's also a good chance it'll be confusing. Now, the other way, when you have, let's say, fire and earth, so yellow and red, you know, you think of fire and earthy, so firewood, all right? So nice little bonfire. Again, you got too much fire, not enough wood, poof, it's gone. No good for anybody. You have the right amount. Both people are feeding it. Feeding that little bonfire. Little uh, fireside chats, frequent chats. Both of them feeding it. Inspiring. Too much of either challenging. Inspiring and challenging. And that also goes for the white glyphs, the spiritually minded processors and the emotional. So you've got white and blue. Now air is up there and it's everywhere actually. And then water. There's a lot of similarity between these two, but water is actually pretty heavy, although it does come down through the air sometimes. And there's a lot of potential harmony there. But again, inspiring and possibly challenging. My um, image for the relationship of water to air is a windsurfer, or possibly kite surfer. <laughs> All right, so you've got the water supporting the surfer, and then the air is making it all happen. Too much air and, oh boy, super challenging, maybe big fail. No air, not enough air, what happens? Just like sitting in the water, right? Okay, so that's how I see those types of relationships. Now, that is only half. It's actually less than half, but the whole Mayan calendar is glyph and tone. The glyphs are what you might call the nagual. Nagual is not the way you say it, nagual, which is much more of the spiritual side. You could say the soul. The tones, however, are the building blocks. You could say ego, and I don't mean ego in the... Uh, ...way. You know what? Without your ego, you would die within a couple of weeks. Okay? Your ego is why you cry for milk and cry when you need your diaper changed and everything else. Your ego saves your ass, okay? Unfortunately, it also makes a lot of stuff up that's unreal and can completely control the yellow-bodied thinking mind thing, all right? Your ego can shut down your whole emotional response and your spiritual. It's pretty powerful. So, your soul and your ego. I always say, your body is your soul embodied. And I'm right about that. You cannot deny that statement. Your body is your soul embodied. Wow, that's so cool. It's like along the same lines as as above, so below. Like, you can't argue with it. Well, you can if you want. Go ahead. Whatever. So, the tones also have relationships. Here's some of them. His own, that's me, um, we have different qualities 
of our tone affecting our glyph. That's the whole thing. The tones affect the glyphs, all right? They could be called types. So I am type 7 eagle. You could say that. I gave them different words, so you've got initiating, pairing, activating, stabilizing, empowering, balancing. See how it's uh, like a roll of bola there? <laughs> balancing, yeah. Reflecting, both sides to each other, reflecting, harmonizing, patient, manifesting, resolving, understanding, transcending. Those are just little words I made up. I just pulled them out of the ethers and <coughs> sprayed them on there. Just like that. All right? Take it or leave it. Please take it. <laughs> so those affect the glyph. For example, keen one, tone one, glyph one, the very first day. Initiating sunrise. Wow! Does that make sense to you? Is that confusing? Does, is that confusing? The very first day is called initiating sunrise. Hmm. Okay. The very last day, the 260th day, is called Transcending Solar Chief. The Solar Chief is the culmination. It's actually the hero's return. It's, it's like every glyph rolled into one. All right, and then you've got 258 other days in there. And today, as I mentioned, Transcending Rainstorm. Wow, that's crazy. I love it. Tell me more. Okay. The way that your tones affect you. Everyone, as I've said a billion times now, everyone has four guides. Okay, so your guiding tones also affect you. This is me, by the way. See? Look, that's me. The ears are a little wrong, actually. Um, everyone has four guides, and so the tones affect you according to their position. Now, I've counted this out for you a billion times as well, but me, I'm seven. I was born standing on tone seven. So you add 5, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. I relate to 12 in the past wisdom guide position. So this means my foundation is 12, understanding. 13, my divine feminine is transcending. 1, my divine masculine is initiating. Two, my future vision guide is pairing. All right. Everyone has different relationships to the tone according to the tone you're born on. So that's how they work. All right. If you would like to know more, just ask whomever you like to ask about it. <laughs> Woo! I had two cups of cacao today, and that's one more than I usually have. I'm just so excited. It's transcending goddess day. <sighs> now, uh, what else can I tell you? Uh, buh, 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 buh. Okay, I want to give you some examples. And I have chosen two main people and two other very connected people to help illustrate this. And my 
exemplars are not Janet Jackson or Billie Eilish. What I'm going to do for you today is show you the connections between these two people. Wow. Now, I know I'm a little late to the party, but let me tell you what happened. First of all, I do not watch TV. I do not read the papers. I do read books, and I just got this one last year, and, you know, I read the whole thing, and I was just like, I somehow knew all of that. Like, I just had this feeling that this is the precise opposite of spirituality and ascension. The exact opposite. Okay? If you want to think about it in um, chakra terms, this is all blackish, reddish. There's so much. Okay? You probably know. If you don't know, just watch their show. Watch the aftermath, which I just finished yesterday. Okay, I'm late. I'm late to the party. I'm sorry. Now, uh, Leah, I'm talking directly to you now. I feel that you will see this. And I am talking directly to you. You are called Patient Dog. That is tone nine. Now, the word patient is just the maybe most prominent key code word. It also means persistent. It is also directly connected to the Divine Feminine, and that's because of the nine lunar cycles in a human gestation period, and also the nine lunar cycles in the Zokin. 9 times 29 is 261. So 9 is directly connected to the Divine Feminine. It's persistence. It's patience. It's never giving up. The dog is love and loyalty and doggedness. It's like a guard dog. It's like a bulldog or a wolf chomping onto something and never letting go. All right? Patient dog. Dogs also are very political. They are into the pack and they are into ranking. They want to be the top dog. Or they need to know who is the top dog. They always look for ranking. Okay, now that is not a bad thing. Look around in humanity. You'll see pretty much the same thing. Although, you know, the wizened packs are on equal ground with each other. Pretty much. But you still need leaders, okay? We do. It's simple. All right. So, you, Leah. Patient dog, which is the tenth glyph, by the way. And, oh, I need to back up now a little bit. The other major way that we all relate to each other is what I call the step families. S-T-E-P, spiritual body, thinking body, emotional body, physical body. That's the four elements, four directions, four colors, four bodies. Duh. Sorry, that was not for you, Leah. That's for me, just saying duh, like crispy, don't be so obvious, okay? Now, we all relate to each other again on this amazing, where's the better one? Yeah, right here. Okay, so, here's south, 20th. Here's north, the 10th. That's you, the dog, all right? Here is east, the fifth glyph, 
and there is west, the 15th, which is me and the eagle. All right, so 20, 10, 5, 15 are connected. Leah, you are in my step family, and I in yours. And guess who else is in your step family? That's right, Mike. Mike, you are the fifth glyph. Fifth glyph. <laughs> it's hard not to say fifth glyph because it is the serpent. Now, you, sir, are tone two. Two means pairing, and it also, of course, means duality and polarity. I like to remind people that polarity means one pole, all right? Our world, primarily through the American mass media and political fluster cluck have polarized everything into being bitter enemies. And that's a certain outlook people can have if they want. When in reality, all is one. Okay? Undeniably, all is one. That was my cushion hitting the floor. So, Mike, tone two, pairing, serpent. Now, I do feel it's important to mention that the serpent can have a lightning fast strike and You reveled in your serpent position for a very long time, and Leah, your bite was as bad as your bark, okay? We know this. It's still both now, your bite and your bark, and Mike, your venom now is doing so much good. The both of you, please keep biting and squirting that venom, because like I said, Leah, your physical body, the way that you relate to the physical is through the serpent, all right? And you can expand that into being your chakras and kundalini. Sure, why not? It's there. The maya, to the maya, the serpent is Quetzalcoatl is Kukulkan. Have you been there? Have you been to the Mayan pyramids, my friends? Go! Chichen Itza. The most famous pyramid, the most famous Mayan pyramid in the world. Everyone's all like, oh, Egypt, yeah, the pyramids. There's like three pyramids there. There's actually 106, and 103 of them are like, Oh, okay. I mean, there's a lot of other amazing sites that are still fantastic, but as far as pyramids go, there's over 2,000 in Mexico, Guatemala, Belize, Honduras, and Costa Rica. Okay? Every single Mayan pyramid has steps to the top. They were for public ceremonies. Many, many, many of them have rooms at the top. I got this rock from the top of Chichen Itza. Okay. So there. Sometimes I put it in my mouth. Now, you two are soul meat. Okay? You two, Leah and Mike, are soul mates. Duh! Alright? 
Everyone in the world can see that. It is so beautiful. May I remind you, Edgar Cayce says, soul companions could be compliments to one another whenever they worked together with a united purpose. More than anything else, this unity of purpose is what best describes Casey's concept of what is at the heart of a twin soul relationship. Now, twin soul, soulmates, whatever you want to call it, just don't call it twin flames, please. That I don't like. Soulmates, twin souls, yeah, sure, whatever. But the whole twin thing is actually incorrect. Unless you automatically know that even identical twins are not identical. Okay? So just get that out of there. Soulmates. Shared purpose. And yeah, you used to have a very different shared purpose. Now, your shared purpose is spiritually enlightened. Before, it was spiritually and darkened. So, so, so dark. Oh, now, Leah, tone nine. Let's count up five, shall we? Ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, one, two. Leah, you have tone two as your Divine Feminine Guide Tone. Mike, you are Tone 2. That automatically means because Leah is Tone 9 and she has Tone 2 as her Divine Feminine Guide, that automatically means that you, Mike, have Leah, Tone 9, as your Divine Masculine Guide. Want to count it out with me? Here we go. You're born on Tone 2. 3. Four, five, six, seven. You have seven, eight, nine. Mike, your divine masculine guiding tone is patient. Now let's go from your glyph. I didn't talk about Leah's glyph in this position. Let's go for yours, Mike. See who we got here. You are a serpent and red, therefore... You will have somebody who's blue and emotional. And adding to that, Leah's tone. Okay, so born on the fifth glyph, go back six. Five, four, three, two, one, twenty, nineteen. The nineteenth glyph is rainstorm. You have patient rainstorm as your divine masculine guide. The rainstorm, as I mentioned, is the number one glyph connected to the sacred feminine, and it has that bolt of lightning. So you, sir, have full-on access to a, a lightning strike with poison from your core self and throwing bolts of lightning, but you're very patient and persistent in your outer face. Leah, you have pairing as your divine feminine. Let's count it out, starting on the 10th glyph as the dog. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. You have pairing wise one as your divine feminine. The wise one is fire, yellow, fiery, but Pairing wise one is your divine feminine. I'm getting all verklempt. All right, so that's how you two match up. Now, there's one other thing with Mayan astrology, all forms of it, not just embodiment, which literally came through my body, but all forms of Mayan astrology allow you to combine any two birthdays. So here's something that's cool. When you add the fifth glyph plus the tenth glyph, you get the fifteenth glyph. 
So there's something truly interconnective between you two. You automatically both relate to the eagle for your emotional body processing. <sighs> and when you combine your two glyphs, it equals the eagle. Mm. Wow. Now, 2 plus 9, 2 plus 9, 2 plus 9. Let me get a calculator here. Oh, 11. Oh, interesting. So 11, as I depicted, is the double stacked rollabola. So together you combine to create resolving eagle. Now, eagles happen to be very good at balancing. So even though the two of you make the double stack rollabola, you are both standing up on it, holding each other's hands and balancing and flying at the same time. Now, I mentioned two other people. Of course, that has to be Leah's husband and daughter. Now, Mr. Angelo, I'm assuming the pronunciation is Pagan, but to me, he's a pagan. <laughs> I mean, like, is, is this guy a pagan or what? Yeah, he's a pagan. <laughs> pagan. Angelo, your birthday happens to be tone three of, drum roll please, the dog. Same as your wife. You two have a mirroring and friendly relationship. Dog to dog. Should I say it? <laughs> Do you like doggy? Do you have a dog? <laughs> I know you had a little puppy. <laughs> Guess what? She's a dog, too. The three of you are dogs. And your daughter is tone one. Initiating dog. All right. In my 25 years of Mayan astrology, I've never seen a family of three with the exact same glyph before. Never seen it. Special. You guys... Must be so tight. You guys have an amazing relationship. A lot of mirroring going on. Okay. Uh, there's a deep, 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 deep friendship between you all. And guess what? You're all soulmates. Okay? All of you. Duh. Uh, sorry about the duhs. Oh my goodness. Now. Let's talk about the tone, tonal. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention that. The nahual is your glyph. The tonal is your tone, which is your ego or your, more of the body, the building blocks. I mentioned that. I just didn't use the word tonal. If you read Carlos Castaneda, he was taught the tonal is the physical and the nahual is the spiritual. And I believe him. Thank you, Don Juan. By the way, the Yaki and the um, Toltec, they're Mayan, okay? So, where was I? Oh yeah, Angelo, you were born on tone three, so Four, five, six, seven, eight. You've got eight here and nine. Remember who I said was tone nine? Angelo, your divine feminine guide is tone nine. Which means, therefore, Leah, your divine masculine guide is three. Let's count it out. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, one, two, three. Three, your divine masculine guiding tone is your husband's core self tone. 
interconnections here are just driving me crazy. Can you can you guys see that? All right. Angelo, your divine feminine guiding tone is your wife's tone. Patient. And because you're both dog, you have patient wise one as your divine feminine guide. Leah, your divine masculine guide is tone three, Angelo's tone. You both have the same glyph here. 10 minus six is four, the seed. The seed is one of the most sexy. There, there are two glyphs out of the 20 that are equally tied for the most sexually oriented. The seed, as in, gotta spread my seed, and the dog, as in, who lets the dogs out? Woo! I'm not joking. I bet you thought I was going to say, who? just did. <laughs> All right. So, we'll leave the other tones out of it for now. I'm telling you people, the tonal relationship between you is equally as important as the glyphs, okay? And then the step family. The level of interconnection here between all human beings is just so tight. I do not know of any other system. I've studied the gene keys, which of course means human design. Gene keys is like a wicked cool DJ remix of human design. I hope you know that. It's the exact same framework, just redone and more poetically, superfluously brilliantized. I don't know how they show connections between people, and, and I haven't bought the books and I haven't done the studies. Same thing with the zodiac. I, I know there's the four elements and it's, it's quite mysterious how they actually combine people and predict the uh, relationship patterns. I, I really don't know. Uh, Chinese, you got, you know, a monkey and a horse and what? I. I don't know. What's that all about? This I know, okay? Your tones, super important. The glyph, super important. Your step family, super important, okay? Now, let's talk about tone one. Initiating. Add it up. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Future Vision Guide. Now, as I was going to say before, because your father is pagan, you must be some Sophia goddess consciousness type person. And your name is Sophia, so I was right the first time. You are a pagan. <laughs> Initiating dog. Initiating love and loyalty. I, I can guarantee when this little puppy was born, she initiated a deeper level of love and loyalty between her parents. Now I'm speaking in the sort of third person, but I'm still talking to you, Leah and Angelo and Sophia and Mike and Beverly. The four of you are soulmates. Okay. No doubt. Now, because someone born on tone one has tone nine as 
her future vision guide, that automatically means anyone born on Tone 9 has Tone 1 as their past wisdom guide. Can you dig it? Let's count it out. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 1. Leah, you have Tone 1 as your past wisdom guide. Guess what? The past wisdom guide position represents past lives and karma. Your daughter, Leah, may have been your mother or your father or your brother in the past. And, you know, there's a lot of really negative things said about this, and there needs to be, but that guy, L, L, Elwood, L Hub, L Hub, L Ron Hub, L, L Hub, that guy was not the first person on earth to ever think of souls and reincarnation. Okay? Even though he has the Guinness World Book of Records for most number of published books, and they're all fiction, every single one of them. Which means he's, he has the Guinness Book of World Records for telling lies and some truth. Okay? I'm sure there's a lot of truth in there. I am not going to dig deeper, and I don't care. I get enough truth everywhere else I look. And what you guys are doing is so incredibly important and you had to go into the bowels of this thing to come out and help help that's all i'm not going to make any predictions about the tax exempt status being revoked and uh lawsuits mounting and people demanding and getting their money back for all of the auditing that they did not choose to do. They were forced to do this auditing and then given bills for it. If it was not voluntary, they should all be paid back. Duh! Put that in your pipe and smoke it! Now, I just want to add one thing that I've already said for emphasis. In the kesh alakin. I am another you, you are another me. All humanity is one, one godsciousness. Namaste. Exactly how did you come to the conclusion that truth is out of style?